Okay, at that time of year when Pittsburghers like to say Kennywood's open. <laughs> but we don't mean to examine your zipper. We mean Kennywood is actually open. It's open to the public this Saturday. This year, the park is honoring a part of its past with a new historical marker, paying tribute to the quote father of the modern roller coaster. And it all comes as today there is talk of a possible takeover and of Kennywood ownership. Here to tell us more is Heinz History Center president and CEO Andy Masick. It's good to be here. Good and, to have you. You know, Kennywood really is one of the oldest amusement parks in the country. It's got three uh, wooden roller coasters, mm -hmm. more than any amusement park in the country. And it started 120 years ago as wow. a trolley park. As the, a trolley park. The trolley would go to Kenny's Grove, where people would have picnics. And uh, it seemed logical for developers to build something at the end of that trolley line. Mm -hmm. So that's how... Uh, the park began, and Fred Ingersoll, the guy you mentioned, was the father of roller coasters. And so tell us about this marker. This marker just went up. The Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission uh, honored Fred Ingersoll with a, a special marker. Uh, these are those blue and gold markers that you mm -hmm. see all over the state uh, highways. And he really is considered the father of roller coasters and of the modern amusement park. He called them Luna Parks in those days, mm -hmm. and it was a, like a chain. And in fact, there was a Luna Park right in Oakland or North Oakland? That's right. In 1905, he opened this park at about Baum Boulevard and Craig Street, and it was modeled on the 1893 Columbian Exposition, mm -hmm. the big World's Fair. But it kind of got out of control. They had all kinds of weird acts, acrobatics. They had live lions. Someone left one of the lion cages open. It got out, ate oh a grandma. Oh, and, oh, oh, boy, things went downhill from that. Well, the, yeah, I would imagine The so. park uh, officials had to come out with revolvers and policemen, chase down the lion and uh, riddled it with uh, bullets. Oh, wow. But it stayed open for a couple more years until Forbes Field opened, and that had all kinds of acts and things uh, related to it, not just baseball, and that's what killed Luna Park. What wow. a story, yes. Andy. I had never heard that part of it before. Stick with me. <laughs> oh I mean, I, you could put your true <laughs> right. false thing true up. True or false, I'm going to carry it around. Did a lion ever eat a grandma at, uh, at an park. amusement park oh in Pittsburgh? Gosh. And so Luna Park is tied to Kennywood in that Ingersoll really kind he, of... He designed both of right. the, the parks, uh, the rides, especially the roller coasters. That's what he was famous for. 277 roller coasters around the world, uh, in Japan, in Australia. Uh, it was an amazing... Um, creative mind uh, mm -hmm. in Fred Ingersoll and people here still ride those wooden roller coasters. Those are my favorites at Kennywood. That's what you were saying. The Jackrabbit and the Racer. My mom's favorite roller coaster there was the Racer. Well, you know, <laughs> many people still have Racer memories and that clack, 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 clack and yes. that kind of bumpiness. It doesn't have the inverted turns that modern mm -hmm. steel roller coasters I have. I don't need that, Andy. No. <laughs> but these are designed so it makes you squish into the person next to you. They don't have right. dividers yeah. and you, you kind of get Get, a little close. get up close and personal <laughs> with people on uh, the, the racer. Well, with so much history and, and being around for so long, it's no surprise that there's new ownership. Once again, talks of a new ownership. They've been with the same company for more than a decade now. So once again, we're hearing about offers and bids coming in. You know, it's really not going to be that much of a change. It, it's always been locally operated. But the Spanish firm um, Parques Reunidos mm -hmm. uh, is uh, a part of a large conglomerate, runs uh, parks Dozens all over of parks, the right. And it's one of the major shareholders who wants to buy a, a majority stake in it. So it, I don't anticipate big changes. That it would be a big yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. But we hope not, because we love Kennywood the way it is. Right. Well, and I know you're going to be celebrating Cinco de Mayo soon. True or false? Did who was fighting in 1862? <laughs> at the Battle of Puebla was or the Mexicans or the Americans who is fighting whom? Hmm. I don't know. That's I don't not know. really a true I defer like to you, Andy. Choice. Well, it's the, you know, I didn't present <laughs> no, it as, I, I, I kind of blew that one, didn't I? So uh, it was the French were defeated by the Mexicans at the Battle of Puebla on the 5th of May, 1862. David and Goliath story. And that's why we remember, that's why Mexicans especially remember Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. De Mayo.
Well, we'll take that information to the kitchen when we head there in just a little bit. You can always <laughs> learn more about Kenny Woods past at the Heinz History Center on Smallman Street in the Strip and watch for more Pittsburgh history today here on PTL when Andy joins us as a regular guest.